Right now, Rudolph Chevrolet. These are all over town. Not bad for a first day on the job. Thanks for everything. Glad you're here. Hey, woman has more baggage than Napoleon's army. Did you get moved into a new place yet? If Raymond doesn't quit helping, it'll be one more load after work. I don't know where all that stuff came from. It came from not throwing anything away, from being a pack rat. Like, she still has her ballerina dress from sixth grade, this little pink number with frills. Thank you, Redmond. It's been a shooting on 12th Street. Oh, man, that place has turned into a combat zone. Two injured, one's a cop. They took them both to Northeast Hospital. We'll call you. How old do you think I'll be before you and Duncan get that methadone clinic piece in? It's, it's coming, Clay. We'll have it in today. Morning, Anderson. Clay. Redmond, Ann, can I get your signatures here? What is it? For the Cathcart Prize, I'm submitting our strike team's coverage of the Moncton resignation. I think I'll pass that as well. Oh, I now recall you have some arcane reluctance in this area. You just don't submit for prizes. Nothing against people who do. Just another endearing idiosyncrasy. Uh, does this also mean you won't be attending the congratulatory dinner I scheduled tonight for the reporting team? Already booked. Uh, Ann? Sure. Seven o'clock, Masons. How about the more you get to know him, the stranger he gets a war. You might want to submit for that. Brad. Wait, he's right here. Oh, Mister. Miss too, Feinberg. Stephanie Sellers. She leave a message? Says she's gonna drop by around lunch. Clay, how do you know Stephanie Sellers? We went to high school together. Man. What, you don't think she's the best looking newscaster on TV? Yes, she is. Clay, I gotta tell you. Ever since your divorce became final, the women have been coming after you left and right. Take a note. Go. Feinberg hasn't got enough to do. Capital News, brought to you by Nissan, building cars for people who want more than just a means of getting from here to there. Nissan, built for the human race. If you're thinking about buying a Camry or an Accord, think about this. The Nissan Stanza has a more powerful standard engine. Mm -hmm. It's got more standard features inside and out, and it costs just $11,650. The 1990 Nissan Stanza. Either we're overachievers or they're overpriced. Take the Nissan Stanza Challenge. Test drive a Stanza. If you still buy a Camry or an Accord, we'll give you $100. Look at that car. My headaches are full-grown, adult-sized bangaroos. So I bang them back with Bear. It's strong. It's not an aspirin substitute. It's made for adults. Just like you and me. For adult-sized pain, Bear. The wonder drug that works wonders. Rocket science fitting. You're talking to a man who's six year old figured out his VCR before he did. <laughs> I just hit send. 
And that sends the call out. Huh. Hello? It's me, hon. I'm busy, Vinny. You know where I'm calling you from? Ron Kerbis's car. Ron's one of my reporters. Vinny, I'm busy. What do you want? Uh, I'll tell you, hon. I'll speak with you later, OK? I'll talk to you later on. Bye. The missus, no sense of drama. That's 75% of your calls, though, Vinny. Is that right? Whole images. The wife and kids. Little things that are really the big thing. Amen to that, huh? And what's the set your best? 500 installed, maybe 60 months for the calls. Which is a big nut, but three months later, you're wondering how you'll live without it. I am too tight with a buck. You know what, Ron? How to expand my horizons. Wait, who are you? Okay. Yes, Sir. No, I certainly am going to pursue it. I'd just like to call you back. Okay. 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 Thanks, whoever you are. Okay. Yeah. I can make it Well, maybe later on you can Here they are. Really? Come. Hey, Edison, listen to this. You know Ned Barber, the big political contributor? Owns shopping centers, always putting his foot in his mouth. Apparently, he's up for an ambassadorship. I just got a blind tip. Might be worth looking into. That's Alan Rossiter's speech. Should I bring him in? You think that's appropriate? Jojo. Oh, good morning, Bob. I once heard you say the readers are our best critics. Uh, I must be giving a speech. So this is a reader speaking now. Uh, forget you, the uh, publisher. I am getting a bit tired of Miles Plato's daily ragging on John Charles Dodd's breakup with his most recent bimbo. It's a gossip column. Mm. Did he get something wrong? It's just getting a bit much. Has Miles got some book deal with a girlfriend? Is that why he's running it so hard? If he had a book deal, I'd know about it. That's policy. Well, just on my mind. The uh, door's always open. Thanks. Stock transactions, 1987. That's as far back as the file goes? Mr. Kirby's his first year with the paper. I didn't mean to take over your office, Polly Ann. May I ask what you're looking for? Just being a busy body. Well, I hope there's no problem. Mr. Kirby's always turns in such nicely itemized expense reports. You know, Ann, guys that I admire just didn't submit for prizes. Well, did they ever tell you why? Well, it can turn around the way you work, you know, how you look at a story, even what kind of stories you do. You start thinking, gee, would, would this one give me a cast card? You know, maybe this one will get me a Pulitzer. Well, you know, I've submitted for prizes my whole professional life. I mean, I got noticed for my job here because I won one. What, does that, does that mean I'm screwed up? Yo, Bobby! Who's that? Means Bobby Russell, internal affairs. You ought to get to know him. Yeah? What does that mean? Something stinks about this case. Okay, now listen up, people. Several hours ago, Detective Charles Ferranto received a bullet wound in his upper right bicep while making an arrest in the 1600 block of DeCourcy Street Northeast. Despite his injury, however, Detective Ferranto, a 16 year veteran of the force, was able to draw his weapon and return fire. Hey, Doug! Hey, Eddie, how you doing? Hey, they put you on days, huh? Yeah, my wife's happy again. Hey, thanks for the wedding announcement in the paper. Ah, that was nothing. I love the way I get to be the recording secretary. Is this the guy? Yeah, that's him. If the handcuffs get too tight, holler. Parental just did me. Wasn't my fault the deal went bad. He just did me. Maybe you shouldn't have shot him. In the arm. After he told me to, man. I'm no street thief. I'm the guy snitching, and he just did me. Doug, what are you doing? You're going my way, aren't you? Mind if I uh, tag along? Crazy. For a limited time, the omelet will not be confined to stuffy breakfast settings. Introducing the Western Omelet McMuffin. McDonald's has liberated the omelet. 
So it's free to go where you go with diced ham, chopped onions, fresh green peppers, and a slice of cheese, all folded inside a toasted English muffin. It's in the streets, it's in cars, and on the job. The new Western Omelette McMuffin, a delicious taste of liberation that will soon be a memory. Thanks to Ford's dedication to quality, there's been continuous improvement in Ford Tempo. And thanks to Ford's dedication to value. You made reservations, right? You'll find that Tempo is priced $1,000 less than Chevy Corsica. Thanks. Keep the change. <laughs> Proving once again, you don't have to be well-to-do to do it well. Now get 6.9 financing for up to 48 months or up to $1,000 cash bonus on Ford Tempo. My favorite jeans, I wear them so much, they're hard to keep clean. Every time stains on my favorite jeans fall. Mama lifts them out with A-L-L, the stain lift, that's all. Daddy clean messes everything, Ooh. everything they wear. Try new improved snuggle dryer sheets. Foxy sweaters, fancy suits, static free is true. Because new snuggle dryer sheets stop static better than ever before. Sometimes things that look alike are really very different. Both these little mousies have sandwiches that look alike, but Jan's tastes much better because it's got Kraft Singles made from five ounces of milk per slice. Fred's sandwich has imitation cheese slices. They're made from mostly oil and water. So remember, just because things look alike doesn't mean they are. Kraft Singles. Milk makes them better. Dateline Twin Peaks. Last week, Shelley finds her husband's blood-soaked shirt in the laundry. Something doesn't wash here. Thursday, will Agent Cooper's dream unlock the mystery behind Laura Palmer's murder? Twin Peaks, Thursday. Go ahead, Mr. Thomas. Keep talking if it makes you feel better. I told you Ferranto set me up, man. I was his snitch. I fingered three dealers for him, and they're still walking around. Once he knew I had him figured for being in on the take, that was a death sentence for me. Hey, paramedic, how about taking that IV drip and sticking his yapper? Just have to get his history. Hey, it's OK. We're almost there. And an AM, FM radio in here, we at least got a ball game. How long did you work for Ferranto? Three years. Paid informant? On the books? On the books, off the books. Three years. No bull Lamont? Look, man, dying ain't lying. I told you he set me up, okay? He goes right to OR. See the uniform at the door. Yeah, okay. Dr. Stafford, the ER, Dr. Stafford. Wait a minute. Don? Gee, everybody says I look like him. Well. I guess I'm in for a lot of sit-downs with you people for the next little while, huh? We're grateful you're taking the time to see us. I just want to say I consider this a great honor. After all, an ambassadorship isn't the kind of thing that comes up and bites you in the behind. <laughs> Am I right? Mr. Barber, are you aware you've acquired a reputation for saying the wrong thing at the wrong time? Do you think that could affect the chances of your confirmation? Look, I build shopping centers. I'm not a career diplomat. I'm a plain talker. I guess that's why the president wants me. <laughs> Several weeks ago, the papers carried a comment you made to Foreign Minister Agnelli about his wife's figure. That was a compliment. I mean, you wouldn't be offended if I complimented you on your figure, would you, Miss Juan? You said you'd like to propose her chest as a national park, like Yosemite. Actually, it was Yellowstone. I'd be interested in Mr. Agnelli's reaction. Oh, the man was flattered. You gotta understand. Those people do not get embarrassed about body parts like we do. And you said you didn't like their national food. Oh, I don't like those noodles. See, everybody's got their own taste. But those noodles are too slimy for mine. And those meatballs? Too much dough. How long before the White House pulls his nomination? <laughs> How long does it take ink to dry? <laughs> Amazing, you chase around like crazy trying to find a story, and then the phone just rings and this falls in your lap. Come on, Cassie. What? 
Look, I don't know who your anonymous tipster is, but I'll bet the farm medicine king steered him right to you. I'm not following. You're the new fair-haired girl, Cassie. Edison's protege. Look, I bear no grudges. Only you are buying lunch. Cops say you posed as an ambulance attendant. You hid yourself on board. Hid myself? I was plain as day. I had permission from the paramedic. Not from the cops, you didn't. Hey, I've ridden in plenty of cop cars. I mean, when they want you to talk to the perp, it's fine. Listen, Clay, what they're trying to do is cover up. Now, Detective Ferranto tried to kill the guy. Now they're yelling about a technicality. You have your press card on? Yeah. In plain sight? Well, maybe not in plain sight. Listen, Clay, what Ann and I should do is get down to the IAD. Put the pressure on. I want to lay it out right in their face. Everything that Lamont Thomas told me. How Ferranto tried to blow him away. Don, you're off it. Why? For deception. You concealed your identity and impersonated somebody else. Well, listen, I had one shot to talk to the guy. I took it. What the hell am I supposed to do? I mean, I'm the one that's out there. It's a judgment call. You should have told him you're a reporter, Redmond. Well, if I told him that, I would have never gotten into the ambulance. Now, would I? And you're on the front of Thomas' story by yourself. The angle is cop shoots and form. You can't use any of the proceeds from our viewers' ride. Stephanie. Hi, Clay. Sorry I can't make lunch. I got these budget meetings. If I'd have known, believe me. New York just sent me down today. I really need your advice. There's a new show here they want me to anchor. I'm not sure what to do. I keep making lists, pro and con. Oh, oh sorry, Clay. <laughs> Why don't we grab a quick dinner? Yes, whenever. Richie Feinberg, Stephanie Sellers. Pleasure. Why don't you walk her down and get her number? I'll call you. Great. Get to that IAD, Captain Bobby Russell, the guy we saw at the hospital. He's a good guy, and he hates Ferranto. So why are you sitting down? I'm making my call list. Forget about being prepared. For once, just go. Wing it. Oh, just wing it, like you do? And if you try and shut Russell up, I want you to get there before they do. Now, please, go. I'm going. We should talk. How about now? A little munch? I subscribe to a service notifies me whenever I'm subject of a credit inquiry. You inquired. Mm -hmm. I go to look at one of my stories. Mr. DeSalvo's pulled my file. I also spent an hour in Polly Ann's office this morning going through your disclosure forms. All your stock transactions since you joined the paper. You mind telling me what the hell's going on here? Well, for one thing, Ronnie, I want you to sell all your fully pharmaceutical shares. And why is that? You did a piece on drug companies a few months ago. I barely mentioned fully. Drugs are less than 6% of their sales volume. Absolutely a marginal call. But I'm going to be more comfortable if you dispose of the stock. Look, Ron, we're two adults. You'd agree the past six months you've had a noticeable change in lifestyle. The Beamer, the car phone, the big numbers soon. I happen to be doing well in my investments. Is it a crime to believe in the free market system? Fair shot. Just because I'd be more comfortable not thinking of your portfolio every time you turn in a story, that's no reason you got to take a poverty vow. You stay within your disclosure provisions, you and me will be okay. All right? Clean air? Yeah, I guess so. What is this, meat alone? Mm. Let's get something straight, Marjorie. You're only a countess because you married a count, and your party was profoundly conventional. I'll come back. No, 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 no. I'm in, Jojo. You have a book contract with this ex-girlfriend of John Dodd? Andrea Schaefer? Mm. We're in contemplation of a book contract. Ought I to give you a memo on that? Well, I guess if it's still in contemplation, you don't have to. But I don't want you running items in your column just to salt the mind for some publishing deal. I wouldn't do that. Uh, whatever your standards are, stick to it. Well, it, as long as we've got this moment, Jojo. Any other thoughts about the column? Is it wild enough? Well, sit down here next to me. I try to go for the jugular, but not be snippy. You know, we should have had this talk yeah, long ago. Columns, fine, Miles, fine. Big audience. Did you like it this morning? It was fine. Which item did you like best? Did you like Gorbachev's kids? It kidneys? was fine, all of them, just fine. I gotta go. Yeah, I'm a big fan, big, huge. Bye-bye. Excuse me, I'm looking for the man who's going to make me famous. 
Andrea. I thought we'd agreed you weren't going to be making any impromptu newsroom appearances. No, I've got a bone to pick with you. Yeah, well, let's pick it someplace else. So he called me last night. Mr. Dodd. Anything juicy? Yeah, he said the two of you were meeting for lunch. At his request, that's correct. Miles, he's going to try to buy you off. I know how his mind works. Jeez, how much do you think he might be offering? Oh, God. Andrea, I'm not going to sell you out. Where's your car? Just down from yours. Miles, I'm just being a realist. I mean, if somebody paid me not to write a book... You would regret it for the rest of your life. Money won't buy silence, Andy. Money talks. It will not be bound and gagged. That's almost profound. Where did you get that? Actually, from my mother. I was educated primarily at home. Get an herbal wrap, Andy. Trust me. Miles, this book could be bigger than either of your other as told tos. There is more dirt in any four hours I spent with that ledge. That's better. Did I tell you he had names for different parts of me? Alphonse and Gaston. The Forbidden City. That's my girl. Hope you don't mind my asking that we talk here, Mr. Dodd. I enjoy seeing the other fellas turf. Occasionally, I buy it. It's just my regular watering hole for lunch. You know, I'm an employee of yours. The little gossip segment I do is on three of your TV stations. And you're expensive. Mm. I'm flattered you noticed. A man with such an impressive array of holdings. Real estate, the biogenetics, the baseball team. By the way, I understand that your lease on the stadium's up. Now, you tell me, is that good or bad? No, yeah, good for Washington if you bring the baseball team here. You're well informed, Mr. Plato. And I know from whom. Many sources are kind enough. One source. Source of your column's blatant invasion of my personal life. Your campaign of slander and innuendo. All of it from a bitter 24-year-old alcoholic whose only talent is fornication. This would be Andrea. Andrea, and the book you two are planning to write. Mr. Plato, I believe your most successful book was Capitol Hill Confidential, about the senator and his girlfriend who couldn't type. Your royalties amounted to $117,000. Only respectable. I'm prepared to pay you $200,000. Not to publish that sludge Andrea's been feeding you. You can take it in cash, annuities, Payments on a 64 Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud? You have done your homework. You've quite a lavish lifestyle, Mr. Plato. You live within your means. Always a battle. Mine's weight. Well, shall I fill this out? I'm sorry, Mr. Dodd. I can't take money for not doing work. Under all those polka dots, you seem like a smart guy. Don't be half smart. You have vulnerabilities. Lord knows I do. And I always get what I want. Those gentlemen work for you? Bodyguards, Mr. Plato. I recommend them. Didn't look like the regular crowd. If you're thinking about buying a Camry or an Accord, think about this. The Nissan Stanza has a more powerful standard engine. Mm -hmm. It's got more standard features inside and out, and it costs just $11,650. The 1990 Nissan Stanza. Either we're overachievers or they're overpriced. Take the Nissan Stanza Challenge. Test drive a Stanza. If you still buy a Camry or an Accord, we'll give you $100. Look at that car. Two pizzas with ten toppings for $9.99? That's impossible. Anything's possible. I taught my dog to say I love you. <laughs> Little Caesars does the impossible. Two pizzas, ten toppings, $9.99. Pizza, pizza.
Tuesday. John Dunaway's got the hots for hope. No. Your wife's a very compelling woman. Did you have an affair with him? I'm a sexually uninteresting pregnant woman. How could any man possibly be interested in me? Are you going to leave me for John Dunaway? An all-new 30-something Tuesday. Wednesday. A couple of black kids had a fight with three white kids. He took the bat and he hit me upside the head. Racial violence tears the city apart. Take a look at the headlines. The press is gunning for us. He was black, period. End of discussion, end of life. Equal justice, Wednesday. Capital News will continue in a moment. Tonight on Nightline, a national epidemic of cheating in colleges. Some surprising examples and some solutions tonight. We know you have a lot of choices. Burgers, fish, chicken, muffins, shakes, taquitos. But when you're looking for real quality for the best value, there's always Whataburger. Whether it's starting your day with a freshly made taquito, a water chicken for lunch, or a water burger any time, day or night. At Whataburger, you get your choice 24 hours a day. A down-to-the-wire look at the tax deadline tonight on News 7 Nightcast. Dr. Ruth on the Arsenio Hall Show, tomorrow night at 11 o'clock on KVIA 7 Together. Safeway and Food Emporium will soon become a whole new shopping experience. Yes, I'm a reporter for the Washington Capitol, and I'm calling about a cosmetic difficulty I'm experiencing. See, I'm sitting here at my desk at the newspaper with egg all over my face. I'm sorry I asked you. I got hung up doing some things here at the house. Dory, we owe Clay a story. Now, if you don't get in here pretty soon, I'm, I'm going to write it myself. Well, maybe you should. Dory, I mean it. Now, enough's enough. Either get in here, I'm going to write it on my own. Would you, Husky? Thanks. Are you okay? I'll talk to you later. All right. Did you read Dunn's memo on what happened inside that ambulance? Yes, I did. Three pages about what Lamont Thomas claims the police did to him, and five suggestions that we should proceed in the story. Not one damn word about how Dunn passed himself off as someone else. He said he forgot. He's putting that part in now. Forgot? Clay, I won't tolerate a devious reporter. People distrust us enough already. I won't have my reporters skulking around like the KGB. They don't identify themselves. We'd be a million miles off to ever figure Redmond devious, Jojo. Perverse, yes. Oblivious, yes. I just got a phone call. The chief's office is denying everything Lamont Thomas told me. Do you believe that? I thought you wanted to know right away because it's such a classic mistake starting a cover-up that's just going to dig their grave. Redmond, get out of here. Go write your statement about what you did. I just answered my phone. <laughs> I'm this close to firing him, and he doesn't even seem to know it. Probably because in his own mind, he didn't do anything wrong. Just doesn't get it, does he? Stop and think. Or just doesn't play on his piano, Jojo. Well, then we better tune him up. Look, Russell, I gave this to public affairs, and they'll handle it. And the chief will see your IAD report when he sees it. Understand? Who are you? I'm Ann McKenna from the paper. Captain Russell, I don't have an appointment. Well, you bet. No, public affairs is room 21, so pack it up. What I said. Captain, I don't need a lecture, and I've got a lot of people to see. I was expecting Don down here. Redmond told me to see you. What do you got? Well, I've got your department's version. A heroic narcotics cop shot apprehending a felon. And I've got what Redman was told by Lamont Thomas, that he was Detective Ferranto's snitch, and that Ferranto blew him away. So run it. You're the reporter. Redman's in trouble. I can't run what he's found out without his coming from a different source. That would be you. Look, 
I just drew up a charge sheet on Officer Ferranto. And when the Chief sees this, there's not going to be any disagreement down here about how this ought to be handled. I'd like to take this. Hey, you saw it. That's enough. <sighs> Captain, obviously I can't use your name. And if this is just a recommendation, if you're going to be overruled... Look, damn it, I'm in charge of this case, and it's going to go my way. And I'm telling you, that's what's going to happen. Dunn would know that. I need to quote you. You have to be a highly placed source in internal affairs. Are you crazy? All right, then, a highly placed source in the department. Take the back way out, the stairs to the left. Did Barbara really say that about Agnelli's wife's chest? <laughs> Well, I think we can confidently say we won't be seeing Mr. Barber present his diplomatic credentials at any time in the near future. Edison, did you steer me that tip? Alan Rossiter complaining? Well, Cassie, perhaps if you hadn't invited him along, you wouldn't now have to deal with his insecurity and paranoia. Well, I did, and I'd like to know. Frankly, I don't feel it's incumbent on me to explicate for Alan or for you, Cassie, the operational details of how I run the national desk. You did well. I'll see you at dinner. <sighs> Miles Plato, any messages? Yes. Andrea Schaefer at 10.45. Miss Schaefer again at 11.30. Let's pretend I know about all the Andrea Schaefer messages. What else? Frankie Chapin? You're certain you're spelling that right, Operator? C-H-A-P-I-N. Thank you, Operator. Mr. Drexel, what a pleasure to see you. No big deal, Miles. And I want to make clear I'm registering this personally. I think you're writing John Dodd a little hard. Officially, Detective Ferranto's on a desk pending his hearing. But that's routine if he's fired his gun. You said he's going to be charged on criminal counts. He's going down. He is. I got that direct from my AD. And it's their investigation. But when I call public affairs, they deny it. They're lying to me. They're covering up, Clay. It's They're not... lying? Well, I know I can't use that word. Clay, I got a million calls out on this. Put out what you got. Jojo wants to see it. McKenna. Take this down. Who is this? It, the moving company. Come on, Ann. Ann. Start typing. Ferranto. 1974 1976. Worked in the Vice Squad South Quadrant. He got a two week suspension for discharging his firearm without provocation. 1977, he was assigned to the far northeast. Uh, he caused a racial incident and was busted back from sergeant. Hey, Redmond, Captain Russell really came through. He saved me about two hours of going from office to office. Good. Just keep typing. I got a lot of stuff here. Excuse me, Ann. You know, we're starting the award submission dinner exactly at 7 o'clock. Should I ask Clay to free you up? No, I think I'll be finished. Don't be late. You're one of the stars. Excuse me, miss, but I, I, I'm working on a newspaper, and I've got a deadline. I'll do my best, Edison. Sorry. Two years later, he's working drugs. He shot and killed a Roy J. Lomox, L-O-M-O-X. He's back. Yeah. What's the matter, Ron? Something just snapped from that lunch. Jeez, I thought we understood each other. You know what I understood, Vinny? It took me a little while. I understood I was having my integrity questioned. We had a talk about Caesar's wife, Ron. As business reporters, we had to be above suspicion on possible conflict of interest. Do you know if it wasn't for what I make in the stock market, I'd be broke? Somebody hold a gun to your head and make you buy those suits? Forty-three grand a year. That's what I make in this place. If you're looking to hit the mother load, you're in the wrong line of work. Forty-three grand a year, cool out at NYU and honors at Warden. And if I had to live on my paycheck, I wouldn't have a pot to pee in. Something about that doesn't add up. Something just isn't fair. Where are we going with this, Ron? I mean a wire snapped in me. I gotta turn my back on three offers a month that'd triple my salary, for starters, so I can stay pure as the driven snow. Then I hear that crap from you? This snapping wire, Ron, what did it prompt you to do? I'm gonna reconsider my options. I mean, if you don't believe in me, maybe I ought to start returning some of those phone calls. 
these will be offers from industry, Ron? From some of the subjects of the stories you've written recently? Yeah, yeah. It happens almost every story I write. And if you weren't squirreled away here, you'd realize it. Let me tell you something, Benny. I'm not gonna get to be 42 and scuffling to scrape six figures together. That about covers you, doesn't it? Just groping towards six figs, if you figure in the benefits. Thanks, but no thanks, no way. So this will be notice, Ron? This is notice. I'm gonna start looking around for some other work. I'm shocked. Mrs. Sapson, do you know what buttons to push to put a message in everyone's computer in the newsroom? Yes, sir, I do. All right, staff member, Turner. Since your colleague, Mr. Redmond Dunn, despite being his six years, doesn't seem to have the slightest idea how a reporter behaves, I'm reprinting this for everyone's benefit. I'll tack on to what I wrote in the guidebook about every reporter must identify himself as such. All of it? All of it. You really nailed Peranto, leading the Metro page with it. It's clear enough? Yeah. I know it wasn't easy with the department trying to hold us on. Redmond's name should be on the story, too. That I don't want to hear. Well, Clay, you should hear it. He's the one who had the contact. And this is the wrong day for that. You read the computer bulletin board? No. You think Turner's kidding around? Hey, man. Forget about it. Yeah, all right. Fredman. I thought that was awfully hard on you, Mr. Turner's memo to the staff. Hey, Toddy, I screwed up. You screw up, you're gonna get yelled at. McDonald's announces a giant leap for the omelet. For a limited time, it's the new Western Omelet McMuffin. The first omelet liberated from traditional breakfast tables, free to go absolutely anywhere. A fresh egg omelet filled with diced ham, chopped onions, fresh green peppers, and a slice of cheese, all folded inside a toasted English muffin. However far this new taste of liberation takes you, just remember, in a very short time, it's history. The new Western Omelet McMuffin. I told you my pantyhose could go through an obstacle course like this without a snag. You'd say, no way. And I'd say, no nonsense. No nonsense. The pantyhose that last. No one helps kids grow into this big world better than Flintstones. Flintstones, preferred by more moms than any other children's vitamin. I'm Uncle Lou, why do you think of that new Diet Pepsi? What, are you nuts? I love this new Diet Pepsi so much better than Diet Coke that I would rather you drop the bowling ball on my tongue than I don't have my Diet Pepsi. I'd rather have a, a rash that I can't reach. I'd rather my mother-in-law come back to life. Ooh, I would rather eat lint than not have my Diet Pepsi. You understand? Yeah, you love the new Diet Pepsi. <sighs> what? Diet Pepsi with 100% NutraSweet, the right one. Sunday.
Fastener, Streep, Ackroyd, Streisand, Chase, DeVito. Time Warner presents the Earth Day Special. Support your local planet. Andrea, we met. We had lunch. Actually, I had lunch. John Charles departed in a peak. Point is, I did not sell you out. For which loyalty I want you to reward me with a surfeit of juicy stories when we work tonight at your abode. Right. Chapter four, the experimental weeks. And Andrea, do me a favor. Hey, Miles. Please, do not cook. Kiss, kiss, seven at your place. Hi, Tony. Good to see you, but we're up to date and I'm very busy. I know. Miles... Yeah, it's about uh, those hockey tickets. They're the best I could do on two hours' notice. No, the tickets were fine. Uh, Miles, um... I, uh, turned over your note. I sold it. I don't understand. I'm paid up till the first of the month. The guy you owe now is named Frankie Chapin. Mr. Chapin, who's been calling all day, who I never heard of, Tony. I like to choose my new acquaintances, particularly those I'm indebted to. Well, the guy gave me a strong offer, Miles. I mean, look, I like you. You're a nice, funny guy. But he offered a big number. Miles, answer his calls. You don't want him to think you're ducking. Good luck. You want him to see me? Oh, yeah, I wanted to put you on notice. We may be taking some heat from the city police. We're running a story about a rogue cop, and the reporter acted like a jerk, failed to identify himself, securing the information. So the police department may blow some smoke about that to deflect from their own problem. I'll batten down my phone. Uh, what were you in talking to Miles Plato about before? When? 45 minutes ago. Well, I'll just have him by. It was, I think, what we may have been talking about earlier in the day. John Dodd. I thought old Miles was giving Dodd a pretty rough road to hoe. That committee you had up, uh, bring baseball back to D.C., how's that going? Well, we're always looking for an expansion team. I guess the National League's up next. Well, how about present owners who might be thinking about uh, moving their franchise? You keep tabs on them, too? Jojo. Dodd's got a team, hasn't he? Always uh, floating rumors he's going to move. Apples and oranges, Jojo. I made clear to Plato I was speaking as a reader on a question of taste. Do you really think that you can speak just as a reader? <laughs> Bob. I want baseball back in Washington as much as the next guy, but... You don't want your publisher influencing content. Not even a gossip column. Well, that's how it came off. I stand corrected. That's how it came off. If I may solicit your attention, Cassie. Come on, dear. Now look around this table. What do all these people have in common? We're all waiting for dessert. We all embrace the process of competition. You might think about your wanting to share your byline today in that context. Well, I have a different point of view about that. Beware the egalitarian impulse, Cassie. It's an excuse for mediocrity. It conceals a fear of failure. And that's what a flicks poor Redmond done. Oh. Don has plenty of talents, but he's afraid to be measured against others who are talented. See how he comes out. And so, fearing to fail, he never succeeds. Okay. You, uh, bring out the teacher in me. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, if I may employ a military metaphor here, I think of us as a battalion of elite troops. Each man, from private to captain, subsuming his own personality in order to create one formidable fighting machine. To the efforts of the Moncton Strike Force and our submission for the Cathcart Prize, Todd, Mort, Vinnie, Anne, Cassie, I've been proud to serve as your commander. Here, here. Here, here. Let's not forget Redmond. I mean, he contributed as much as anyone else. Of course. To Redmond Dunn, who has resisted every corrupting claim of adulthood, clinging tenaciously to the eternal ideal. 
Our very own Peter Pan with a pen. Was that not what you had in mind? Redmond has his faults, but he's a great reporter. Well, I suppose that's an opinion about which reasonable people may differ. Then we differ. Thanks for helping me out with that story today, Haskey. Dory, I think we should talk about Redmond and Anne. Haskey. Dad. Well, no, let's just follow this out and get it over with. My impression of the attraction between Redmond and Anne is that it now seems to be developing to a future plateau, which maybe we don't know the name of yet, but the closest I can come to it in English is that maybe they're falling in love. So here's my question for you. Are you going to let this make you crazy? Are you going to let it ruin your work? Not to mention ruin my work. I'm sorry I didn't help with the story, Haskins. You help with the story. All I'm saying is that it's your call, but I don't think that you should let what's happening between Redmond and Anne make you nuts. I'm, I'm done washing. You dry. You got a great anchor job now in New York, and they're offering me a great anchor job in Washington. My producer of the network says you ought to get combat pay for working with him while I make up my mind. My fallback position is that men find me threatening. Do you? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, Clay, can we just sit here for a minute? We've all changed so much. Everything's happened so fast. I miss those days when we were all living up in Albany. You had that little house when Shelley was pregnant. I remember. Maybe we should get going. There could be some traffic at the airport. You know what I remember? We were having one of those potluck dinners. It was snowing. I'd come early because I had a casserole and you came out of the shower. Didn't know I was there. Shelley always forgot to replace the towels. That was a good house. Good times. I was so jealous. It's almost 9 o'clock. It's the last shuttle to New York. When my mother told me you two had split up, I felt sick. I didn't know whether to call you or Shelley, so I didn't call either one of you. But I know what I was thinking. Can I have the keys? No. Stephanie. I can take the 7 a.m. shuttle. I don't really have to be in the office until 10. Look, I'm not a mom. I've always found you very attractive. Clay, we have so much to talk about. We should be together tonight. We should hold each other tonight. There'd be too many people in the bed. All that stuff you were talking about, all the good times. When Shelley moved back to Albany with my son, it brought all that stuff back up for me again. It's just... It's just too fresh. Promise me you'll see me again. No matter where I work. I promise. Taxi! Never get one now, not in this weather. I don't mind giving you a lift if you like. Thanks, but I'm sure there'll be another cab along soon. Enjoy the dinner? I was glad to be there. You seem very preoccupied. Edison, I want you to come clean about the barber story. I mean, I heard everything you said about not being afraid to compete, and I agree with it. But if you steered that tip to me, I want to know it. I do not understand why this is such a big deal for you. You're my editor. I defer to you. But I don't feel like I need to be fed tips on the sly. In fact, it makes me feel funny. In fact, I find it kind of demeaning. So you're mad at me? 
Don't misunderstand me. I don't feel like I'm a finished product. Cassie wants to spread her wings. Is that the import? Wants to be her own person, professionally, I guess. With your help, with your guidance, because I, I am grateful. You worked hard. You don't need me to create you. You've created yourself. I think I get it. Edison, you're taking this wrong. No, Please don't. No, I think I'm don't. taking it exactly right. Good night. the nude hologram on the inside of the book jacket, but we shrink wrap to prevent gratis looks. Miles? Yes? Miles, I thought all afternoon about some angle I must be missing. Well, you know how you turned down John Charles' offer to stick by me? The only thing I could think of is that you're a nice guy. Andrea, don't think. It's a duplication of effort. Oh, don't worry. I won't tell anyone. I just wanted to let you know how, how lucky I feel. Keep the tape recorder by your bed. Ugh. Who the hell are you? I'm Frank Chapin. A new financial consultant. So that's who you're doing that kiss and tell book with. How'd you find this apartment? I get the particulars on everyone owes me money. More pertinence why you don't return my call. Mr. Chapin, I want you to know that Tony Rago and I never had any problems about my paying my debts. I don't know, Miles. You mind if I call you Miles? <laughs> I got these records here. Let's see. May 18th, Mr. Week. August 11th, Mr. Week. Were you and Tony friends or something? You'll notice that every time I missed a payment, I paid double the next week, plus additional interest. Double payments, additional interest, that's complicated, busy. I don't like busy. I take your point, Mr. Chad. Plus, I see all you're paying on is your VIG. Let me give you a little free advice, Miles. You want to start chipping away at that principal? I'll try my best. Try? That's not a word I understand. I think Vince Lombardi once said, there's no trying, there's doing. I'm a big fan of Lombardi. Mr. Chapin, I'm a big boy. I didn't walk into this with my eyes closed. I understand what it means to owe you money, and I'll meet my commitments in timely fashion. That's what I wanted to hear. We got an understanding. Please stop squeezing my hand. You know, all this goonery has a limited appeal. You've got a smart attitude, friend. You got people mad at you. Don't get me mad at you. Don't shoot, don't shoot, don't freak out. It's me. Hi! Hi. Oh, I fell asleep. How was your dinner? Hasn't King make a speech? Yeah, he talked. The food wasn't very good. I unpacked some of your stuff. You know, just regular stuff. You know, nothing personal. Well, uh, why don't we unpack some wine? Sounds good. You help me find the place? We owe ourselves a housewarming present. Oh, boy, you scared me. You know, Redmond, I think maybe you're right about Edison King. Trust me, babe. He made this wise crack after the dinner about you not wanting to be up for the Cathcart. Hey, I ate elsewhere. To your new home. Do you have your prize submissions? Yeah, somewhere. Well, let's take a look at them. They have to be done right, you know. There's a whole science to this thing. We'll want to make sure they got you in the right categories. I mean, if you're going to submit for a prize, you might as well do it right. Right? <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, good, they've got you in writing on deadline. Three stories. What happened to our fourth story? What about our Ellisville house story? Hmm? Where is it? 
What? I don't understand you at all. Welcome to the club. Sometimes I dream I'm in Italy, driving this incredible sports car. And my boss is there. He says, We need a ride to the shareholders' meeting. Now, here's where it gets weird. The sports car has four doors. I mean, there's no such thing as a four-door sports car. It's just a dream, right? Formula Alka-Seltzer with less sodium, and you can take it with just a little water. It tasted great, but it's not Alka-Seltzer. It is. Are you two taking Alka-Seltzer? Oh, no, 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 no. Alka-Seltzer. New Dance Formula Alka-Seltzer. Thursday on Primetime. In Africa, they're not just hunting animals, they're hunting people. Troops shoot to kill any ivory poachers. Diane Sawyer in Kenya meets the man waging his own war for the future of Africa. They shoot us, so we shoot them. Primetime Thursday. Story about the woman fighting crack dealers on her block. What's going on? They just shot her. Next on Capital News. Frankly, I'm disappointed in Cassie Jojo. Bump her down. If I'm not cutting it, let me hear the words. You're gonna walk out in six years with me to go off in the damn jungle? If I have to. I'm calling in your loan. But I want the whole 84,000. I'm over my head, Vinny. I'm in a lot of trouble. I've got you! Move, oh, old man! Move, oh, man! Move! I'm Diane Sawyer. Later on Nightline, a national epidemic of cheating in colleges. Some surprising examples and some solutions tonight. This is Joan London. And Charles Gibson. Tomorrow, find out why you may need a broker to buy a home. Plus, songstress Melba Moore performs on Good Morning America tomorrow. I'm Jeff Lindbergh. Join us next for News 7 Nightcast. UTEP assistant basketball coach Norm Ellenberger is closer to an Hawaiian paradise. Please join us next for News 7 Nightcast. This is ABC. The program or the commercial. If it was the program, you can.